Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a drill press table for my Porter Cable drill press. Commonly sold at Lowe's. Make reference to some of my notes here. Uh, this is a model PCB, like uh, Paul Charlie Bravo, 660DP, as in Delta Paul. This is a versatile drill press and it has a lot of features that a lot of other drill presses in this price range may not have. Now, there are a lot of videos on YouTube on making drill press tables and they range from the very simple to the very complex. And I just wanted something that would suit my needs for the woodworking that I do. Now I'm always impressed with woodworking for mere mortals, Steve Ramsey, and the designs and ideas that he has and the simple yet effective solutions that he has. I'm very impressed by that and I get a lot of my ideas from him. I also got inspiration from Shop Built on YouTube here and he made a drill press table with the idea of being able to go on and off simply without a lot of uh, attachments or you know things to uh, be able to get it off with. It uh, goes on and off quickly. And his design incorporated using a recess on the bottom side of his table that would fit you know right on to his stock table and he designed it to fit like a glove it just fit right on there just perfectly and didn't move now, this port of cable is kind of an odd animal it's kind of a half round and half square type of table here is a pattern that I made for one of the ideas that I had for trying to make a recessed cavity underneath my table to make it fit like a glove. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as easily as I thought because the table on the port of cable also has somewhat of a slope around the edges of the table and that turned out to be rather hard to try and match. But I came up with another idea that works just as perfectly well and works great on this Porter Cable drill press. So in this video, I will show you how I made this fit my Porter Cable drill press table. Below, I will also put links to Woodworking for Mere Mortals and the drill press table that he did. Very simple design, very effective. And also, I'll put a link to the video for the drill press below for shop builds. Very good, and that's, you know, both of these are what inspired me to do this one. So I hope this works for you and we'll see you as I go on here. Here's my $30 Harbor Freight drill press table. But it's a little bit short and when I put some jigs on here such as this vertical drilling jig and then for the other ends here to secure this into this I want to be able to slide this in enough where my drill bit centers on this and I'm at a real close edge on the bottom side of these here and that T-track where these are very close to slipping out and not really getting a good grip. So I'm going to build a bigger table that's uh, wider so I can have more range with putting jigs on here. The reason that my table from Harbor Freight here sits so far back uh, from this edge is because this is what lines up center to my drill chuck. So that's why it you know, winds up being so short here is as I'm trying to center onto this replaceable backer. Okay, as you can see on my Porter Cable drill press it has a basic metal table, not real good for woodworking. So I want to make a new drill press table to replace that old harp. Here at the table saw, I had two boards that were 16 inch width by four foot uh, in my scrap pile. So I trimmed them down to a 15 and three quarter width to clean up the edges and uh, cut it to a 30 inch length here as that's the size I'm aiming for for my drill press table. I'm going to join these two sides, got the knots on them, and have these clean sides together. Uh, before I do that with the top piece I'm going to go over to the bandsaw. I'm going to cut out half circle here for clearance space for the drill press post and then I'm going to cut out an area here for putting in an insert for a becker board for when drilling. Then I'll come back here and glue these boards together. You know, originally that old Harbor Freight uh, table that I've got for the drill press was 24 inches long or wide and I wanted to go with something a little bit longer than that 
I was thinking of going with 30 inches, but then that really seems to be a little bit too much. So I'm going to scale it back to 27 inches, which will be uh, 3 inches wider than the Harbor Freight one was. 3 inches shorter than the 30. So I think that will be a better size. Now I'm going to find my center on here and then mark for making that half round hole of a 4 inch diameter. 27, half of that would be 13 and a half there. Now I have my compass set it's for a 2 inch mark. It'll give me a 4 inch diameter. Actually it's a little bit wider than what the post is, but it uh, doesn't hurt to have a little bit extra on there. It's not a critical measurement. Okay. That, if you can see it. Uh, I will cut that out with the jigsaw since I don't have enough clearance on my bandsaw table to make that cut around. On the corners I'm going to mark half inch rounds, just like I did on my bandsaw table. That uh, softens the corners. Uh, doesn't hurt as much if I bump into it that way. So, And that's small enough of a curve on there that I can just do that on my oscillating sander. I don't have to whack it off with a bandsaw at all. Okay, now my oscillating sander, I'll sand that up to the line to get it straight and even. Okay, so I measured the distance from this post to this hole in the middle here. And what I come up with is, uh, it's kind of odd and hard to figure out the diameters exactly, or where the center of that hole is. But I noticed that to the edge of this hole here, where this chamfer begins for the hole, it's 7 inches. And then I looked at the diameter of the hole from this one edge of the chamfer to the other edge of the chamfer where that ends at, and that's 1 and 1 eighth of an inch. So dividing that in half is 9 sixteenths of an inch. So the center of my hole is 7 and 9 sixteenths of an inch from this post. So that's what I'm going to measure out on my board to lay out for my cutout for the backer board. When I laid out the center for this space here, I provided an equal distance from the post all the way around here to you know center my table here on and to make my measurement here for my center. So here on the board I marked up my center where the center of the hole should be on that table, 7 and 9 sixteenths of an inch there. And then I also marked it for center across the board at 13 and a half inches. And then from there, I measured out, I want to have a 6 inch square insert here. So I measured out, you know, from the center here to 3 inches, which is each way. And then got it all squared up and marked out with my square. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill in each of these corners a three-quarter inch Forstner bit hole, about three-eighths of an inch deep. May add some in the middle of these parts too. And what I'm going to do is have these Forstner bits holes kind of overlapping here, just like a half circle. And that'll be for fingers uh, getting in there to remove and put in new parts or to rotate it around. Another reason why I want it square is so I can rotate it around. Uh, depending on different positions, I might be in different places. And then the holes will make it easier for extracting this piece out of there. Got one hole drilled and I had set the depth stop uh, to stop it on point. Okay, I've got all those finger holes made for being able to remove that piece. Next I'm going to do is drill a few holes, small holes or something big enough so I can uh, get my jigsaw blade in here and go around that just to get this roughed out and then what I'm going to do is I'll put on some strips on here double-sided tape uh, to guide my router so I can get some good clean and straight cuts well I thought I had filmed my cutting out of this but maybe it didn't as I drilled a few holes and then cut this out with the jigsaw here now I'll put on some strips here to as guides for a router bit so I can get these good and straight. Ok, 
Okay, on my router, I've attached a piece of the same material that I'm using for around the hole here as my guide, and the same thickness here. And this will give me balance uh, for when I'm going around because um, without anything, I can tend to rock too much. So this gives me an extra footing there to keep me steady as I go around. We'll see how this goes. That looks like it got me some good cuts. I uh, have to square these edges up a little bit or else I'll round off the edges of the insert when to put it in there. So these look like uh, they came out very, very good, very nice and straight and smooth. Okay, so I have my top cut out here, pattern for the post of the drill press. Got this cleared out here where I can put in backer boards for drilling. So what I'll do is take the other board that I'm going to put on here and I'll size this up to match to this other top that I've done and cut out this clearance area here for the drill press post. So I'm going to rough cut this um, opening here for the drill press post. I'm not going to sand up to the line. Uh, once I glue this and the top board together, then I'll use a flush trim bit on the router to go around that and all around the other corners to make sure it's all equal around. So just cut this out roughly for now. Okay, I'm going to trim the sides of this top here, got these boards glued together, and I have a flush trim bit in my router here. It's a half inch diameter and it's got a half inch shank for better stability. And I've got it set to the depth to cut around up to the edge that I want it to trim to. And the length of the cutting blades on this is one inch. This is a three quarter material, so it's a perfect fit. What I'll do is go around this, get it flushed up and trim. to keep the cord out of your way so you don't cut into it. So we got it trimmed up flush all the way around. Good smooth. A little bit of sanding and uh, it's ready to go. Gonna have to cut and put my T-tracks in yet. Now I've laid out where I'm going to put in my T-tracks here. This is the center of the track and I'm locating the centers 12 and 3 quarter inch from each other here and so that'd be the center. Now the center of my router bit is 3 inches from the edge to the center. And I've got a 3 quarter inch bit here and I set the depth to be equal to my T-track that I'm putting in and I've set that up on a test piece to make sure I'm getting this in there right. Then I put this Bora clamp guide on here. I marked out uh, three inches from the center mark to this edge and then set up my guide here for my router at three inches because that's the distance uh, from the edge of my router to the center of the bit. And I have a kind of a guide mark on my router here. A little sharpie mark. That's the measurement I always go from. 
make sure I'm consistent. This is the T-Track I'm going to be putting in. Fits in very snugly and the edges are great. So, perfect. I'll, uh, when I'm done with all this, I'll cut this to length of fit exactly uh, at my miter saw. And I'll do the other side. Same as the first. I cut my T-Tracks to fit here. This one I've got screwed in. This one setting in here. Trying to line this up evenly. I use a little piece of scrap wood to make sure I've got a good flush alignment with the front part at least here. And I'm using this snappy drill bit that is self-centering for like when you're doing hinges and stuff. It automatically centers itself and then the screw or the drill bit comes out and drills the hole. And for the screws to hold these tracks in place I'm using a number six three quarter inch length flathead wood screw. And it fits into these recessed parts here. Got that there. I get one drilled. Drive that in to hold it in place and then I'll drive in the rest of the screws. Just want to get a little bit snug. These screws are pretty small so they'll break off the heads very easily so you don't want to be doing that. Okay, so, got these T-Tracks in there. Now I'll be able to more easily fit my jigs on here, like this one. If I get that size fitting around in there to get it into the right position that I need when I'm drilling these vertical holes. And these knobs will lock in place so it holds solid. Also I'll be able to use other kinds of hold down clamps. These here are small ones. I've got some larger ones also, but these are kind of small ones for right now. Hold work in place. Then I've got my insert here for backer board for drilling. Fits in great. And a couple of finger holes there. Comes out. We've got cut up a bunch of these. Uh, well I had it sized up and fit and, and finesse to fit, so I cut up a bunch of these. Will work great. Okay, on this table here, right here, there's a hole. It has a 5 8 National Fine thread to it. So I picked up a bolt at a local supply company. It's a 5 8 National Fine thread. I'll thread that in here. You can see how that threads up through there. And what I'm going to do is set my table on here, get it flattened into position. I'm going to tighten this up just until it starts to touch the bottom side of the table. And then I'll press down on it to make an imprint on the bottom side of the table, just exactly where this bolt hole is at. And also, what I'm going to do is to set my table on here. And this hole here in the middle is a one inch diameter. So a one inch dowel fits in there perfectly. I'm going to use another piece of dowel with the screw right into the center of it. Then I'm going to cut it off and put a point on it so that I can come up from underneath there when the top is on here and then use that to make an imprint as to the center of this hole. Then, on the bottom side of the table, I can use my Forstner bit, one inch Forstner bit, to make a slight indentation into the bottom of the table. And then I can glue this into that. Then I've got two points of reference here for holding this table in perfect alignment. Okay, this is the bottom side of the table. I had sat this with the other side around, drove the bolt up to make an indentation as to where this hole would be located, and then made a scribe indentation right in the center where that should be. Then I used the 5 8 drill bit that I happen to have. Most of our drill bits only go up to about half inch, but uh, I've got a 5 8 one I have on hand for something. And used that to drill this hole in, and I drilled it deep enough uh, 
just to go through one layer of this. And then once I flip this back over and I screw the bolts up into there, it actually gets a bit of a grip on there and holds the table securely. Rather than just being like an index pen, it actually gets a grip on there and holds it in place. So the next thing I will do is be putting in the one inch dowel here to fit that center hole on this table. So I cut a piece of dowel to length here. That's a little bit longer than the hole that I need to go through to get to the bottom of this table. And I use the center finder to mark the center on the end of this. Use my dowel drilling jig here, or vertical drilling jig, to drill a hole that I can fit this screw into. Then I'll screw this screw in, clip off this head, and kind of sharpen the end of it there with a on my grinder or with a file uh, so I can get good center point on that. I stick it under there and whack it with a hammer to get my center point on the bottom side of my table here. Here I've made my mark using this dowel from underneath with this cut off screw which I created, grinded down to a point, slipped it up inside that and gave it a whack with a the hammer there. Made this impression to be center point for a one inch dowel. Now I'm going to drill this with my Forstner bit, it's a one inch Forstner bit, down center. I'm going to go about half inch deep on that, set my depth stop. Hey, that's the half inch deep. Now what I'll do is uh, cut a shorter piece of dowel to length here and glue that into there and that'll be my one of my alignment points. So I cut this dowel to about an inch and a half length. I've got a half inch that's going to go into the bottom side of the table so it leaves about an inch sticking out to go into here. And then I sand it around this a little bit because you know wood is going to shrink and expand you know through the seasons although my seasons here are fairly stable as far the humidity goes then i chamfered with the sandpaper a little bit of a chamfer around the bottom edge here to help this fit into the hole more easily so it's not going to be you know real difficult or a struggle and on occasion i may need to sand this down a little bit and wax it a little bit just to make things uh you know slip and slide together easily okay so the glue has dried on this dowel it's stuck in there good so i'll flip this over get it to drop into the hole drops right in then all i got to do is tighten up that uh, 5 8 bolt here into this hole on the bottom side and everything lines up perfectly and holds very solidly it says perfect everything is lined up perfectly got my inserts here to put in and as I wear them out I can rotate them different directions uh, that's what I love about having a square insert uh, perfect job I think well to wrap this up thank you for watching this video Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got the inspiration to make something of your own. Please give me a like and share with your family and friends, and please subscribe to see what I may come up with next. Thank you.